<clears throat> All right, thank you. Uh, to begin with, to start the Friday World Series, I want to so read it together the one by verse. That is Zephaniah, 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 chapter 3, verse 17. Chapter 3, verse 17. Uh, I will read it for you. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord you God, your God, is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take a great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with the singing. Amen. He will take a great delight in you. Who is he? Who is he? Yes, Father God. The Father God will take a great delight in you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Even if, even though we are uh, we are staying good good way or or not, uh, it doesn't matter. Only the Father God just delight you, delight in you. Amen. So I today morning I make it in this verse verses, this verse. I'm just to think about to think about the dear wife, the family. So I want to give you this five verse. So just a delight in him. Amen. Amen. Give me the thumbs up if you understand. All right. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Poor teacher and Timothy teacher. Hello, welcome. Uh, as you know, uh, what what concept uh, what concept is today? What's the today Friday service concept? Do you know? Today we have the special guest guest that is the Yu Hyun Kim. So say hi. Right. Yeah. So uh, Yu Hyun Kim, as you know, he is the one of the really the great worship leader, right? In this wise. So I hope. I really like his worship. So whenever we we worship to God, I I felt I felt he God's presence. So I like his worship. So and then uh, he served he served the long time, uh, come to science, part of come to science. So I think that today the seminar his instructor really good for the hour the next step. So when uh, but let's welcome to our instructor today uh, with the crack. All right. So, one, two, three. Welcome. Okay, Yuan Kim, can you to share today the seminar? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, can I share my screen on this thing? Uh, one second. All right. Can you guys see? Yes. Can you see this when I full screen? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so... Um, I don't know what's there already. So, okay, so yeah, uh, it's um, it's an honor to be able to have this talk with you guys. And I mean, I, I know most of you guys, uh, if not all of you guys, and um, you know, most of you guys probably don't really even know what I do for work or what I studied at school. And yeah, I was approached to kind of give this, um, I guess, quote unquote seminar to share what I do in my kind of professional field because you guys only see me on Sundays and, you know, you see me um, just as, you know, as part of the EM or leading worship here and there. Uh, so, yeah, I thought it would be a good opportunity kind of to share what I do to see if, you know, if 
you guys kind of want to, um, I don't know, pursue this field or see if you have interest in it and also how my kind of faith plays into um, my professional um, life as well. Uh, so I will just go on and uh, let me just do this. Uh, so what is computer science? So I think, so computer science itself is a very, very wide and very generic term. Um, and there's, there's so many different disciplines within computer science that you can't really kind of say it's one specific thing. Um, in general, it deals with like algorithms and like you could imagine it, it deals with working with computers, um, whether it's physical or software. And, you know, a lot of people kind of um, related to programming, which is partly true, but that's not necessarily true. So even if like programming is not something you're you're super comfortable with or something you're interested in, that doesn't necessarily mean you don't really like computer science or you're not drawn to it. Um, so yeah, there's so many different things in here that probably doesn't you know mean a lot until unless you're really into uh, this field. But just know that it's not just one specific thing. Programming or coding is one thing that everyone kind of understands or, or is most familiar with, but there are just so many other things around computer science. So, so um, that's one thing I just want to highlight. Uh, for my motivation for um, pursuing field, pursuing my job in computer science or computer science related job, is uh, in college. So I didn't really have any exposure to computer science or programming at all. So, you know, if you're going into college or if you're close to going into college and you've never programmed anything or coded anything and you feel a little, you know, scared or a little, um, you know, it's like you, you don't know anything about programming. So you're like, oh, I should not pursue it. I think that's completely wrong. Um, I had zero experience and I just happened to kind of pick it up during college and took a couple classes and kind of went on with that. Um, it, I majored in electrical engineering, um, which is not necessarily computer science or programming related, but there is some overlap. So there was some exposure that I naturally got with my major, um, but you know that might not be the same for everyone. And um, in general, I just thought, you know, just problem solving with code, with software was something that was interesting to me. Something that you could just program on your computer to solve problems was pretty cool. Um, so that was my motivation for pursuing this, this career. And um, to go over my typical day at work, I basically have a bunch of meetings, which is probably gonna be the same for, you know, I think all jobs. Basically, you, you have meetings with people that have, you know, some, you know, stake in the product. So if you're building like a mobile app or if you're building something for another customer, you need to have meetings with people, right? So that's obviously always going to be there no matter what job. Um, and then specifically for my, my job personally for programming, it's a lot of coding and debugging and also Googling for solution. Like there's a, there's just ton of stuff, there's ton of resources out there that you have to utilize. So that's a lot of what I do. So that's pretty much what I do all day. I just kind of, not all day, I would say 60 to 70% of my day, I'm just sitting down, typing away, looking at my code, trying to figure out what's wrong with it and fixing it and whatnot. Uh, another thing I do is review other people's code. So um, as part of programming, you don't just write your own code and then let people use it. You have a system where we review each other's work. So we read each other's code pretty much line by line. We, we have to look at you know, what their intention is and see what their uh, methodology is. Method Technology is in like what they're programming and vice versa. Whatever I write, I would want someone to double check and see, hey, like, does this make sense the way I'm doing it? And then uh, another thing I do is uh, monitor the stuff that I write and, you know, how it's behaving and if it's um, behaving the way I expect them to. So that's a lot of just 
looking at graphs. Um, these are actually pictures from my actual work, but basically, you know, using these metrics, um, I'm able to tell like, hey, something that I wrote is broken or something that, you know, I wrote is not performing properly. This is kind of the stuff that I monitor um, from day to day. So that's that's basically my entire day at work. Uh, I mean, I would say here and there, there's something slightly different, but that's more or less it. So a lot of coding and reading other people's codes pretty much. Um, so this is more for me specifically as a software engineer. So that would be my actual title. Um, and this is for me specifically, it might not be same for another programmer or another engineer at a different company. There's a lot of different ways people um, implement programming and like engineering and how people manage engineers. But for me specifically, um, the pros as, of working as a programmer um, is that I get to kind of problem solve and build things that people want to use. So, you know, that's just something that's a passion of mine to be able to kind of take a problem and problem could be like, you know, build a mobile app that, I don't know, people want to use to like, uh, you know, do something. And, you know, in my head, it's how do I, how do I get that to the user? And to do that, that's, that's, there's something rewarding about that. So that's kind of what I do, or that's one pro of being a programmer. Uh, another one is you could work anywhere with the computer. And, you know, in most cases, I, I mean, in some cases you need internet, but most of the time you, you just need a computer and you could pretty much do whatever you need to do. Um, and that's, you know, not the same for a lot of jobs. Um, I, I would say a lot of jobs, especially with COVID these days, they've kind of figured out how to do this. Um, but programming, I think, has always been in that um, realm of being able to just work out of your computer. And then uh, most of the time, I'm kind of working in my own silo. And <clears throat> that's, I mean, that could be a pro or a con, but um, basically, you don't have to be, you know, bottled down by, you know, a bunch of meetings or like having to talk to a lot of people, you could just kind of sit down and, you know, solve whatever problem or build whatever, you know, app you want. And then uh, the, third, uh, the fourth one is um, job security. So, I mean, this, like I said, this, this could be similar for other fields as well. But I think programming or co computer science in general, I think there is just a growing field and there's just so many different opportunities um, out there, um, especially with, you know, just technology getting so big, you know, you hear about all these apps that are coming up out of nowhere. Um, so these, these people all need some sort of computer science um, related workers. Um, and even outside of the tech field, like, you know, there's a lot of different areas, industries that need some sort of, you know, these, these computer science, you know, nerds. And the cons of programmer is all similar to the pros. So uh, the problem solving itself can be very tedious. Like you could spend a whole day trying to figure out what's wrong with this one thing. So it's could get pretty tedious, could get kind of annoying. Um, so I would say that's a pro and a con. Another pro and a con is you could work anywhere with the computer. So, you know, it's, if you're, if you have someone that you know needs something to be looked at or needs like some emergency fixes, um, if you have a computer, you kind of have don't have an excuse not to be working on it. Um, that's not the, that's not the case for all companies. Um, I work at a startup, so it's a very small company, so it's easy for me to just kind of take requests from people, and you know I could just fix it on the spot. So the ability to be able to work anywhere is not necessarily a good thing. Um, and then the other con is working in your silo most of the time. So sometimes you kind of get lost in your own world. You're working by yourself. Um, most of the time you're working by yourself. Uh, so you're kind of um, in your own little world. Um, sometimes you don't get to talk to a lot of people, especially with COVID. You're not in the office physically. so. Some days I'm literally just coding the entire day and I'm, I don't even have to like meet with other people. Um, so that's that could actually be a con also. 
Um, and some people, I guess, would prefer more like a you know person to person uh, interaction instead of just being in your own silo the entire day. Uh, so moving on to kind of like how my faith impacts at work, I kind of try to, I try to figure out how it does, um, but I think it kind of applies to any field, not you know computer science or engineering specific. Um, I think just my behavior, my language, my lifestyle at work is definitely um, something that I do. Uh, I do. Uh, I am aware of. And also like just being just being able to have open discussions about faith and religions with coworkers. So for example, you know, when, when we go to, you know, most of you guys know Jesus retreat, um, what, when we used to go two years ago, more than two years ago. Um, so yeah, I, I would have to take, I think the entire week off in order to go to Jesus retreat. And, you know, for them, it was kind of surprising, right? Something like that. It's, uh, you know, in a usual place, workplace, you get two to three weeks of vacation and people use that time to, you know, either go back to your home country or like take a vacation. And that's only like two to three vacations in one year, if you think about it. So they would, you know, notice that I would take pretty much one of my two vacations in one year to go to this retreat, to volunteer, to, you know, um, do this. And they would kind of uh, notice that kind of thing and they know that I do go to church and they know that I am um, you know heavily involved in church so um, so stuff like that I think just being open about it and not hiding it um, is definitely one big thing that has uh, impact at my workplace um, but like I said I think I think this could apply for any field and um, I don't think I don't necessarily think there's anything specific to computer science. Um, yeah. Uh, and then just to kind of go over my faith story, I mean, you guys, you know, I've known most of you guys for a long time, uh, but kind of just to go over, and maybe you guys don't even know, uh, but I grew up at Tongsan, I think, uh, starting from like fourth grade, which is like, I don't even know how many years ago now, um, probably don't want to count. Uh, I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior in my senior year of high school. Um, and that was actually from a Jesus retreat. Um, and then uh, during college, I kind of, I would say fell away, or I guess I was uh, spiritually low. Um, I guess, quote unquote, that's like the term. But yeah, during college, I was really focused on school. Um, I didn't really have a church or community while I was at school. I would come visit Hongsan here and there, but you know, my, I was living in the city and I didn't really devote um, a lot of time to church. I didn't really devote um, a lot of my, you know, free time to like, to like, yeah, I didn't really, de really dedicate um, any of my time for, for church or, or my spiritual growth. Um, and then as I was working and after college, uh, I started, you know, kind of regularly going back to Tungsan. And I think that's, where I really kind of got to understand the gospel. I think um, as my senior year of high school, as I accepted Jesus Christ, I don't know if I really fully understood the gospel. And that's something that I kind of grew, um, you know, I would say as an adult, as I grew and kind of um, gained a little bit more experience in life and kind of understood the gospel more and more. Um, and advice for anyone interested. Um, so I think, you know, one reason why, um, you know, I was asked to give this vision seminar was because a lot of, a lot of you guys were interested in um, going into this field. And um, it may look daunting, it may be a little bit kind of scary to like, jump into it. But I would say, uh, try like small projects to see if coding fits your personality. Um, so there are a bunch of little projects online you could Google and find like, you know, different difficult level of difficulties on projects you could do on your own. And there are just a bunch of guides out there. Like if you, if you are struggling setting something up or like if you're struggling with figuring out how to do something, you could literally just Google it. And there are like millions of results out there trying to like 
show you the right way of doing things. Um, they're not always right, but like you could kind of piece it all together and and uh, figure it out. Um, and yeah, there should be, I mean, I, I would say building a, you know, using a small project to like learn your way is definitely the easiest way to learn and the also easiest way to evaluate to if coding is like something that you are good at or you are, you also enjoy doing. Um, and this could be done, you know, if you have a good enough computer to run, I don't know, like, like any like games you guys run or like any like um like any even any browser like it should be good enough to run a program so um it's not like you need like a really nice computer in order to do this kind of stuff um and then i think um figuring out what discipline of computer science uh, that draws draws you in most is uh, important as well so like i mentioned in the beginning computer science is just a slew of different things and they're not all similar i would say like they're very very different um so these are some terminologies that you guys might might not understand but you know from mobile app development that's like ui ux so that's just like so if you open up like instagram right there are people that are, that are coding how like when you like something like double tapping the image to like something like that's example of something that a front end engineer would figure out how to do. So that kind of experience is very different than you know something like like um, I don't know a data scientist would do. So there are just so many different things that are within computer science that it would be good to. If you're interested in this field at all, it'll be good to figure out and differentiate what you're drawn to or what you think is more interesting um, than just saying like a blanket statement that I want to go into computer science. It's probably best to kind of figure out, um, you know, what discipline of computer science you you kind of want to pursue or you're more drawn to. And I mean, lastly, I think. You know, for me as an electrical engineering major, I was fortunate enough to like, you know, pretty much be forced to take some of these computer science classes. So I I had to take them and I had to kind of evaluate for myself if, if I liked it or not. Um, but I know a lot of a lot of majors out there, they don't really require any computer science classes. But you know, if you go into if you go to college. You know, there are always going to be opportunities for you to kind of take a class or two in computer science and not really affect your, I guess, um, classes that work towards your major. Or, you know, if even if it's like an elective or something that doesn't necessarily help your major, I think taking one or two will, will benefit you one way or another in the future. So, I mean, that's that's my take on it. And you know, it doesn't hurt to do that. Um, and that's, I think, if you if you have a little bit more kind of, um, if you're sure about um, wanting to test the waters, I think, you know, taking one or two classes is definitely good to do. Um, I guess that's more kind of geared towards people that are gonna be in college soon. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think overall, if you're interested, um, trying out just small projects on your own, on your own time is definitely the, the easiest way. Just take an afternoon, pick a project and just working on it is, is definitely the easiest. And uh, that's, that's pretty much all I had. Um, are there any questions? Ian, this, um, I have two questions. Uh, the, the first question is that um, in the computer language, you know, um, and let's say, for example, in the past, the R was the very dominating computer language, but lately, uh, the Python is taking over uh, the R's, play, R's place. And um, so the, as a software engineer, the, the question number one is that, do you have to really learn the language as the as the, the, the computer language is being evolved. If you do, then how do you really keep up to uh, keep up the trends of this um, uh, 
the, the computer language is being, new computer language is being introduced to the world. That's question number one. Question number two is that you briefly mentioned the data scientist, um, but uh, can you elaborate more um, comparing the data science versus the computer science on that? Okay. Uh, yeah, in terms of uh, language, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so there's definitely a, a very, like, fast evolving landscape here. Um, I would say, you know, there are new languages that pop up almost every year that gain traction. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that's definitely uh, something to keep in mind as if you are were to pursue it, uh, you know, at the time, you know, some of you guys are like, you know, in middle, uh, in, in middle school or early high school, you know, by the time you, you guys reach college, it might be a whole new different set of languages that are popular. So at that point in time, I think you need to kind of evaluate like, oh, what, what are the languages that, you know, companies are looking for, or what is a good language to learn? Um, so for me, from my perspective, I have, I have to keep on top of um, the landscape that's changing. Um, so, you know, like, like you mentioned, um, uh, the language R versus Python, um, the fact that Python's gaining a lot of, a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of traction these days, that kind of, kind of alerts you as an engineer, if you want to have more options for future jobs, you want to stay on top of the trends. Um, so I think that's, that's one big thing for being, you know, in this field is you have to keep up with the news. Uh, you have to keep up with, you know, what's popular and what's in demand and what's being used more and be able to kind of quickly adapt and, and learn it as well. Um, and I think that's one thing as a computer scientist is a computer science, you know, uh, major or engineer is um, you're not necessarily, I mean, you are learning the language to do a certain things but you're really learning the concepts of doing something and you're using language as just a tool to do it. So that's why I always call it like just problem solving. And, you know, I didn't really mention any language cause you know, I, I could, like you said, Python is very popular. I use Python for work. Um, and that's a easy, that's an easy way to just kind of get going, but you know, who knows what might be popular or what, you know, you're going to be, what, what you're going to be using that's more comfortable for you. So um, I think it's going to be constantly evolving and, and you just need to kind of um, figure out what works best for you. Um, regarding data scientists. Um, so, I mean, I think data science is, um, that's like, I think the overlap between computer science and kind of, um, what do you call more like uh, the mathematics, mathematics and like kind of um, that field. So, um, so data science is um, data science itself is another black and uh, blanket term um, within computer science. But data science uses basically there's like artificial int intelligence, machine learning. So basically, it uses programming. Um, like databases, um, like very big databases. Um, it basically, in order to kind of, um, and it uses different uh, models, which are very, you know, complicated things that people kind of study for like years in order to figure out these models, in order to like figure out uh, like user behavior models or like figure out, you know, um, like if you guys are on like Instagram, like, there's just, there's a lot of data scientists that are figuring out what you want to see next. So they're the ones behind, like the brains behind, you know, what to recommend you guys and stuff like that. Um, so I would say for data scientists, it's a little bit different. Um, I think coding itself is not necessarily required. It's I think for data scientists, it kind of goes into more of the, you know, if you're more interested in math, or like if you're more interested in statistics, um, that's where I think, yeah, some, some data scientists don't really even know how to code that well, but they're really smart in terms of math and statistics and um, statistics modeling. Um, and then they basically use, you know, basic tools um, or like, you know, R or like, you know, simple Python scripts 
in order to take their like statistic models and then use coding in order to um, yeah process like immense amount of data using you know their their models. So yeah, I think data science is definitely uh, another big field and um, if. Yeah, if I would say if you're more interested in kind of math side of things or statistics and not necessarily not necessarily the, the the programming side of things, um, data science is definitely going to be something that you're going to be more um, you know kind of drawn towards. Thank you. I have a question. Um, how long after you graduated did it take you to find a job? In the field that you want to work in? Uh, so for me, I kind of got lucky. So my junior year of college, um, I basically had no internship. I mean, at that point, I mean, junior year, I mean, even, even before junior year, summer, you're supposed to like start kind of figuring out internships and stuff, right? But I didn't and then last second, I uh, reached out to a professor and kind of got in contact with the startup and worked for them for that summer. And then senior year, um, right after graduation, I was pretty much given an offer letter from that same company that I interned with. So, I mean, I kind of lucked out and I found a job right away. And so after graduating, I think I took maybe like a month off or something but I started working for that same company um, right after I graduated. Any other questions? Uh, I have a question, two questions. Uh, where there are there any important the standard uh, when you're choosing a major for job? And second question is, uh, you say that uh, during the college uh, you faced the fell way, fell way. So how did you over overcome? Did, did you overcome that time? Oh wait, what was the first question again? I didn't hear. Uh, so I mean, the, do you do you have? the standard, the criteria, when you're choosing the job, the major? Oh, uh, like choosing, choosing, a, choosing a, a major? Yes. So, do, do you understand? So I mean, uh, when you the choose the, your job, the major for the studying, so what's your the best the pri priority? Uh, what, what's the best, best, best standard? For you uh for choosing a major i mean i i mean for for computer science specifically i mean i think there's um i mean honestly i don't, I don't think it matters a two ton like i think a lot of people kind of don't necessarily know that they wanted to get they don't know they wanted to get into programming i mean um like if you think about it, like for me, um, a lot of my peers were engineers. Like, um, like I was an electrical engineer, um, and electrical engineering isn't necessarily for programming. I think major majority is actually for like you know a bunch of other things, like um, like signal processing and like you know um, solid state and stuff like that. So it's not. Um, not necessarily tied so heavily to the major, um, but obviously, if you're interested in computer science, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's you know, computer science majors, um, and then there's uh, engineering majors who could easily just learn to program and be able to um, find a job as a programmer or engineer, um, like a software engineer. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's a certain standard or like certain like specific majors, I would say, um, is needed to find a job in, in this industry. I think it's more about, you know, your kind of passion and being able to if you if you have. Um, yeah, just just some 
passion and be able to if you if you want to have something on your resume just be able to do stuff like um i mean they have boot camps which is like basically let's say you did your college with some completely different major right like let's say you did it in like i don't know like some i don't know, some like business major let's say um and then <laughs> paul knows and then afterwards um you know let's say you do it for a little bit and then uh, you're like, oh, I want to do programming. Um, I've seen a lot of cases where people just go to these um, boot camps, which are like, some of them cost a lot, like thousands of dollars. Um, but some people do it for like three months. Some people do it for like a year. And then they end up finding a job as like a, you know, programmer. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it kind of, I don't think like the major you choose in college kind of like, locks you out of like programming um, world, right? Like, I, I don't think you need to necessarily have a full like four year, like you need to be in this like specific major in order to like kind of get into this industry. Um, and then, yeah, and your second question about um, my faith kind of, um, I forget what I said, like falling away from church during college. Um, yeah, I mean, I, my school is like very demanding for um, like academics, um, or at least I use it as an excuse. But during, yeah, during college, I was uh, living in the city for a little bit. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, I guess I didn't really necessarily make enough effort to um, like, you know, join the necessary like like Christian groups or like join like a church um, that's local that's easy for me to go. Um, you know, coming from city like it was hard for me to go to Tongsan, obviously. So you know, I guess the you know the responsible me should have kind of maybe looked for a local church that I could have attended during college. Um, but I think just with like you know with school being so busy. Um, and just being, I guess, caught up in like, you know, just being in my like, I guess, like the college, like social life. And that's not like necessarily drinking and stuff like Cooper Union is not a place where you have parties, trust me. So uh, it was more, yeah, it was more for just like, you know, making friends. Um, I just didn't have the community around me to kind of uh, go to church and I guess, you know, somewhat irresponsible on my side. And yeah, kind of, kind of went along with that. And then, yeah, and then after, after the four years, um, uh, I started working and I was commuting from home. So I was going back to Tongsan. So um, I think for me, it was just like the natural pattern of things. Like as I started going to church again, I naturally, you know, had more, you know, QTs or I had, I spent more time reading the Bible or I spent more time praying. So um, for me, it was just like natural pattern of life, I think, um, like after college, I went back to, I started going back to my, you know, home church, and I just started kind of naturally getting back into the flow. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think probably the, the best thing to do is to um, probably find the community uh, in the college you're going to, um, in order for you to kind of build the right, you know, social circle around you um, that will build you up as a Christian, not necessarily kind of make that like your secondary in your life. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from our students? Josh, David, um, and I have a question. <laughs> yeah. So I, I take Comstock High School, and honestly, I kind of like don't find myself enjoying it. Like, how long did it take you to like like actually enjoy computer science? Um, that's a good question. Um, cause yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I took my first computer science class and I was like, this is a thing for me. Um, I think it probably took me 
um, I mean, I don't think there's a time. I think it was more around like, did I enjoy what I was building? Um, so my my first experience with CompSci was my freshman year. And I had this class with a professor that gave a really hard project and he was known to be really, really like, you know, not the best professor, but and gave really, really hard projects. So I didn't enjoy it actually, that first class. And it was really hard to do. And like we were building this like game, which was like pretty bad. So like I didn't really find enjoyment in it. Um, and then I think eventually in my second or third year of college, I was building things that were more interesting and I felt more like reward coming from it. So yeah, I think it's not necessarily about time. It's about like what you're building. So I don't know what you're doing in your comp site class, but I'd imagine it's like what your like your final result. I'm pretty sure you're probably not like rewarded by it. Um, but like, like I was saying about that last slide where, you know, you want to do like little projects and stuff. Like if you're, if you build like, like a small game or like small, I don't know what you enjoy, but like, if you, you know, if you're able to build like this, like small, small thing, that's really rewarding for you. Like, oh, Hey, I built this thing by myself. I think that's where you kind of start gaining enjoyment from it. And not from not necessarily from like the classes and stuff, although they are helpful, but sometimes you're building things that you're like, oh, this this thing is useless. Like, why why am I building this? But yeah, that's a good question. I have a question. It might be a little off, but um, how do you know that you're like good at like coding other than like the obviously that the thing works, but like other than like just whether it's a it's working or not working, like how do you know that you're good at it or that you're like good um, getting better at it? How do you judge that? Right. Um, yeah, I think that I think that one also is a good question. I think it also comes, yeah, that, that comes, I think, as you, as you spend time doing it. Um, and I would say if you're struggling to do certain things that, um, you know, others or just in general, people are doing faster, I guess it kind of is a signal that, oh, maybe it's not really cut out for me. Um, like, yeah, I, I mean, I think that that one's kind of hard to evaluate, but I think it's similar with like any other job or any other, you know, thing that you're working on, right? Like if, if other people are able to like pick it up quickly and learn it, um, but you're kind of spending more time and not understanding it and you find yourself kind of like not really advancing quickly, then I think it's probably a good indicator. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I, I honestly don't really know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I personally don't even know if I'm that good at it, but like I enjoy it, so. <laughs> Can I ask one more question? Um, you know, the career path, you know, typically if we get into the, the corporate, then there's some career path that we can, uh, that we can think through. But uh, as a software engineer, um, what is the typical career path? Do you stay as an expert in the one, um, the computer science field with some languages or do you, can you develop your career path as you um, build your careers and how, how does it work? Yeah, so for um, career path, um, I guess I'll go with the simpler version, which is, um, so you could start off with just like, uh, I mean, if you want to go with titles, it's like there's a junior software engineer, there's an engineer, there's senior engineer, and then it, there's different levels of engineers. So there's, and then it kind of goes up to like the tech, like 
director and you know all the way up to like CTO. Um, in terms of like what you're kind of going to be responsible for as you go up the career um, like ladder is pretty much you're gonna be doing less coding and more of, um, and like, like I was saying, and one of the things I do in my day to day is review other people's code and also meetings with other people to figure out how to take the vision of the company and you know code it. So I think as you move up and up, the the latter you kind of move away from coding a lot throughout the day and you kind of start moving towards um you know more of like the manager role where you're figuring out oh this needs to be coded in this way um and i need someone to do it for me and then also meeting with the like, like i was mentioning like the the people that has the vision for the product and being able to talk to them in a technical sense. So I think once you get up to a more senior and more like higher up in the ladder, um, yeah, you're, you're definitely doing less of the coding and more of the managing, I would say. Um, and that's the typical path, I think. Um, currently, it's, it's not really necessarily by time. Like you could, it's not like you spend one year as a junior engineer and second year as like an engineer and third year as like a you know senior engineer but um i think if you prove to the company that you're good then you kind of get promoted and whatnot so um yeah like having strength in the language or knowing more languages is always a plus but i think um just uh being able to uh, work at a company and um perform so like just being able to take on you know achieving the tasks that they give you um to like do stuff on you know by due date and stuff like that i think if you keep doing that that's pretty much the way you kind of go up the ladder and um you know different company companies have different systems uh different titles but um uh the responsibilities changing as you go up the ladder is pretty much going to be same um throughout Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? Hey, students? Don't ask it. Uh, I have a question for last. Okay. So, so as a Christian, do you have any special the things in your job to serve, serve to God, to serve to neighbor? You know. In my job specifically? Yes. Do you have any special things or uh I mean in my job specifically i think honestly it's kind of hard i mean i think because you know i'm just like like the the job itself i'm just like coding and you know um and like meeting with people so i think in More terms coding. of like yeah. <laughs> what is that so i mean the plan is real if you have to plan you know if i have yeah to in the future Oh, in the future. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think the stuff I mentioned, I think uh, that's, I think still relevant. I mean, being able to have like open discussions with my coworkers. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily easy thing to do um, for a lot of people in their work setting or they, they don't even talk about it. Um, so, I mean, I think that's still something that, you know, something that I, not something that I struggle with, but something that I don't necessarily 
you know, kind of do unless like it just comes up. So I think that is something that, you know, I could probably do more, I think. Um, because it's, it's one thing to just kind of talk about it when it comes up versus like me trying to encourage talking to people about it, um, talking about my faith and, and, you know, what I believe in and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think maybe uh, more of that could be uh, good. Yeah. This is a, this is a thank, thank you for the answering. I think that these times you serve God you, because you share your mm -hmm. life and opinions. Thank you. Thank you so much.